This is our fourth session on Philippians 2, 12 to 13. It won't be our last. These two verses are as important as any two verses in the Bible, I think, about how to live the Christian life, hence five or six sessions on them. And what I want to focus on in this session is simply this phrase, work out your own salvation. And we won't get at the root meaning of it, but we will get at a key meaning of it. Namely, what is the meaning of the word work out and the meaning of the word salvation? And I'm going to argue that this word, there's one Greek word behind this, kat, er, gadzeste, long word, kat er gadzeste, from kat er gadzamai. And I'm going to argue that it means, um, no, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you the examples where I'm getting it before I tell you. So, Father, as we focus on the meaning of workout and the meaning of salvation, would you illumine our minds to Paul's intention here? Not our ideas, but Paul's intention in these words. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. The best way to go about defining a word, like a Greek word like this, translated workout here, is not first to go to the dictionary but first to go to the uses in the same author. So we're in Paul. The author is Paul, (laughs) P-A-U-L. And I'm just going to go to random uses and show you what this word means. And it's pretty clear. So here we go. Romans 2, 9. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil. There's the word. Kater gadzete. Romans 7.20, now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, there's the word, but sin that dwells in me. So you could say, if we tried that, do your own salvation with fear and trembling. Act your own salvation. And that's not real clear. What kind of, what does do mean? And look at the ordinary, regular usage of this word in five or six other places. The law brings wrath. That is, brings about wrath in the life of the person who pursues law as a way of salvation. The law brings about wrath. Or Romans 5, 3. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Same word, kater gadzete produces endurance. Romans 7, 8. Sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Romans 7, 13. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. For this light momentary affliction is preparing bringing about, producing for us an eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians 7.10 Godly grief produces repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. It does death in the sense of bringing death about. One more. 2 Corinthians 9.11 You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce, bring about thanksgiving to God. So this word, work out here, is a translation of this word, which ordinarily means produce, bring about. Effect, cause it to happen, cause to happen. That's the ordinary meaning of the word kater gadzeste. And here is how we should translate it. But much more, in my absence, produce, bring about, Pursue and effect and cause to come into being your salvation. 
Now, he's not addressing unbelievers, right? He's addressing Christians, and this salvation here is not initial justification, the first thing that happens at the beginning of the Christian life, because that's by faith alone. You don't produce that by working. You don't bring that about and effect that. God does that through faith alone alone, but this is obedience. Just as you have always obeyed, much more in my absence, work out. So this working out, this producing, bringing about salvation is obedience. Now, what is this? Or is that teaching that we we bring about, we produce our own salvation? Is that a heresy? And it's not going to be a heresy, and it's not going to contradict salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, because we've got this coming in the future sessions. But consider what it means elsewhere in Paul. Chapter 3, verse 13, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for what? What are you pressing on, Paul? What are you straining for? What's this straining? I didn't know the Christian life involved straining and pressing. Yes, it does. Toward a goal. What's the goal? The prize of the upward call of God in Christ. That's the resurrection. That's salvation at the end of the age. That's being welcomed into the presence of God through Jesus Christ. And it involves Paul in straining forward and pressing forward. Here's 416. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing you will save both yourself and your hearers. Saving yourself is not a foreign idea for Paul, and it doesn't mean that we die for our sins or we become meritorious and earn our salvation. It just means that there's a pathway that leads to salvation and a pathway that leads to hell, and we get on the path that leads to heaven, and we produce and sustain and make every effort to stay on it and thus save ourselves. Or, as Paul, as Jesus says in Luke 13, 23, and someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? Saved be few. He doesn't give them a number. Here's what he says. He said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. This is the door. This is the narrow door that leads to salvation. And he says, strive work out, bring about, produce the entrance into this narrow door. One last text, Galatians 6. The one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. There is a sowing in life that leads to eternal life, and there is a sowing that leads to corruption, which is the opposite of eternal life. And then he says, and let us not grow weary. Keep on, keep producing, keep bringing about. Let us not grow weary of doing good, obeying. For in due season we will reap, reap what? This reap eternal life. We will reap if we do not give up. This word work out here is translated by Peter O'Brien in his commentary as continuous, sustained, effort. And he gets the idea of continuous because right there, that ending, kater gadzeste, is a present tense in Greek, and present tense implies ongoing action, not once for all action. So the Christian life is a continuous, sustained effort, produce 
bring about, effect, cause this, your salvation. Now, we will ask, how, how does that not contradict salvation by grace through faith? How does it not ruin assurance? How does it not conflict with justification by faith? And, and the keys are going to be right in here. And knowing that this salvation is future salvation, because God is the one who is at work in you, both to will and to work. We are not left to ourselves to do this producing, not left to ourselves to do this bringing about. I'm going to argue that God causes the miracle of our obedience that leads to salvation. Just as you have always obeyed, so now keep on obeying, that is, bring about through that obedience your salvation. God causes that miracle. That's in this sentence right here. But we act the miracle. God doesn't replace us. We are the ones who strive. We are the ones who produce. We are the ones who obey. We are the ones who bring about an effect, though God all the while is the decisive cause. Now, we'll come back to that in the future sessions, but all I wanted to do in this session was nail down that this word right here is the straightforward word for produce, bring about, effect, cause to be, and this salvation is our final salvation, and there are numerous texts in Paul that speak in those terms. Therefore, we are not, not passive. The Christian life is not Passive, it is continuous, sustained effort.